All the interpretations of quantum mechanics have some difficulties, and they have particular difficulties in explaining exactly how certain processes or mechanisms are supposed to take place. So for example, in the Copenhagen interpretation, when we do a measurement, the wave function collapses. Okay, how? What is the physical process of the wave function actually collapsing? How does that unfold? How does that actually work? The Copenhagen interpretation is silent as to how that process actually works. In the many worlds interpretation, there is no collapse of the wave function, but instead there is splitting of the universe. Every time there's a random result, there is a new universe featuring each new random result. Okay, how does that work? How does the splitting actually function? How does the universe actually divide itself? Why can't we see it or perceive it or experience it or sense it or measure it? How does this process actually unfold? When an electron uh, gets shot at a screen and it can go left or it can go right and ends up taking both paths and there's a universe for both paths, how does that splitting or bifurcation actually unfold? The many worlds interpretation is silent on that. And today we're looking at the pilot wave theory of quantum mechanics, which says that for every subatomic particle, there is a real existing wave that is associated with that particle. That wave propagates throughout space and time, and the wave tells the particle how to behave, how to act. And so the question becomes, why can't we see or sense the existence of the wave itself? How come we only see the particles? We only see the particle at the end of the experiment. How come we can't separate the existence of the wave and study it as an independent object and measure it and, 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 and look at it and manipulate it the way we do with every other physical object in our universe? Why does this pilot wave or guiding wave seem to be special? And in pilot wave theory, it takes away the non-determinism in the probabilities of quantum mechanics and replaces it with hidden information where the universe only appears probabilistic. It appears non-deterministic because the actual location, the actual trajectory of the particle is hidden from us. How? How is that information hidden? And why is it that information and literally no other information throughout the universe. Like why, why is the position of the particle so special? How does that actually work? And the fact that pilot wave theory singles out the positions of the particles to be hidden from us and to be guided by the wave equation and not say the momentum of the particle, this makes it very challenging to reconcile with special relativity. Special relativity tells us that position and momentum are just two sides of the same coin. They're, you have to treat them equally. You have to put them on equal footing. This is the whole e equals mc squared uh, space time thing. It all comes from the same thing, that position and momentum uh, you have to look at as a unified whole. You can't single out position over momentum and treat it specially and develop a law of physics that only talks about position and ignores uh, the consequences of momentum because there are two sides of the same coin because a, a stationary position for one observer looks like a moving object for another observer. It all depends on your frame of reference. We know this from special relativity. But pilot wave theory singles out the positions of particles and not the momentum. It treats the positions of the particles as something special, something different, and ignores the momentum of particles. That's why it's very, very difficult, possibly impossible, to make a relativistic version of pilot wave theory. Doesn't make it wrong, doesn't make this interpretation wrong, but it does highlight a shortcoming of pilot wave theory, which is you should be able to develop a relativistic version of your interpretation of quantum mechanics. And with pilot wave theory, that path isn't exactly clear because it highlights position so much more importantly than it does momentum. And there's another more fundamental issue when it comes to pilot wave theory. In pilot wave theory, the waves propagate, and they move around, and then they tell the particles what to, what to do. They act on the particles. They, they massage the paths of the particles as they go evolve through time. In everything else in physics, we have Newton's 
basic insight, which is that for every force there is an equal and opposite force going in the opposite direction. For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. There's never a one-way street in physics. If I, if, I, if I punch the wall, I hit the wall, the wall is pressing back on me. I feel that. That's what like, hurts my hand when I try to punch the wall. Physics is never a one-way street. We see this throughout the universe. right? This, this ultimately is expressed as like, conservation of momentum. But in pilot wave theory, the wave acts on the particle, but the particle does not act on the wave. The wave tells the particle what to do, but the particle has no influence on the wave. So how exactly is that supposed to work? And how do we reconcile that with, with everything else we know about physics, where there's always equals and opposites, there's always actions and reactions. The wave acts on the particle, but the particle doesn't act on the wave. How does that square up? How does that actually work? Why is this statement about equal and opposite forces true throughout the entire cosmos and the entirety of physics and everything we know about the universe except this one spot. What makes it so special? We don't know. We don't know. Pilot wave theory has shortcomings, but so does the Copenhagen interpretation and so does the many worlds interpretation. No matter what, when you try to interpret quantum mechanics, you run into headaches. So take your pick from any of those three interpretations. There's going to be parts of those interpretations that seem very appealing and parts that don't taste quite as good. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to keep supporting the show. And I'll see you next time.